Okay, so this would be the Q and A session for the Ethereum project. So, do you, if you guys have any questions, uh, keep them coming. Uh, we have the tutorials here, so hope we can answer them for you guys. Okay, how's the building the solidity part or the smart contract part going for you guys? Have you started working on that or have you finished? Uh, what's going on there, maybe? Uh, yeah, I think it will be best for all of us if, uh, uh, if some of you maybe just tell us how you are implementing the solidity parts as well as maybe if you have started the uh, using the frameworks maybe hard drives brownie or truffle what you are implementing might be helpful for others so how is it going or uh, what's your progress Okay, well, uh, I'm assuming that uh, either you are very confused and you haven't started the implementation or everything is clear. Is everything clear or? Professor. Yeah, so sorry, I was uh, writing something on Slack when you asked that question. So, uh, yeah, I don't think everything's clear, personally for me. And I've started using, uh, I, I kind of mentioned this earlier, but I started using the truffle suit and it was uh, really easier for me to start. I didn't know any other option. I, I know about brownie and the hard hat, but I didn't actually try to implement them. I just went straight to truffle, installed it using NPM and created this uh, template, I think it was Box or something like that, meta coin or something like that, and I've been using the uh, config file in order to deploy the the uh, templates contract on the Gorelli <laughs> uh, network. I don't know if I hmm. said that right, but uh, yeah, I think it's uh, it's it's really nice to use Truffle, and also I've been watching uh, Nardos using hard hat and basically both of them follow as like a similar pa pattern of uh, starting the whole project. So my question would be actually on implementing the smart contract, which I think the GitHub link for the refrigerator, the refri, <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that uh, sorry, I can't say that right now, the, but the project about the, uh, the, a GitHub project that was posted on the, the challenge document is really nice and gives, uh, I think, a nice uh, way of interacting, implementing this smart contract. But I have a question on how we are going to be using this, uh, the tests, actually. I'm a little bit confused on that. And uh, yeah, that's all. Mm. Okay. okay, I couldn't okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> It's all right. Uh, thank you, Fisa. Uh, I was going to ask you about the smart contract implementation because uh, I feel like most of you are uh, working with the different frameworks, maybe Truffle, Hardrat, and Brownie. But have you guys finished implementing the smart contract? Because we are going to use those tools to, to be able to interact with our smart contract, to deploy our smart contract, and to manage our smart contracts, and so on. But we need to write the solidity code for our smart contract using solidity and have the full implementation has anyone finished that implementation or uh, how is the smart contract implementation going on for you guys okay so i think uh, the first thing that we need to do is we need to discuss the concept uh, of the smart contract implementation we have the employer okay underneath 
Uh, I actually have a question. Uh, so uh, my question is, I was trying to implement, like I was uh, following the tutorial uh, given by Narcos. So I uh, tried to uh, deploy the, the smart contract on uh, Gorilla network, but I kept getting this error uh, that says like, uh, your private, uh, Gorilla private key is too short. And uh, I didn't, I don't know like why it's saying that. So are you using the correct? Uh, yeah, my question is, uh, so like, uh, I, I, I asked uh, Nardos like this question and she told me that for the Gorilla private uh, key, I uh, will like uh, have to provide it from my MetaMask. So how, how can I get the private key from MetaMask? I mean, it, it just gives, it gives me the public key, right? So when I copy the, I use the, the public key, maybe that's the reason why I'm getting the error. So how can I extract the private key from the, uh, yeah. Okay, so I think you just can click on the mm -hmm. MetaMask. Okay, now just go. Yeah, um, so <clears throat> to get your private key then, yeah, I forgot to mention, I remember telling you that to use the public key, but um, so what you have to do is you have to export it from your account details. I think there is uh, this, um, <clears throat> if you go to the account, account details, details, yeah, and then there's is there an export private key? Export private key, yeah. Yeah, there you go. So I provide the password and now it gets the private key. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. I think that I'm, I must have um, gave you the wrong information. I told you to use the public key, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, this this goes for everyone who's who's trying to use that. Okay. Thank you for bringing that up. Okay. Thank you. Uh, actually, I liked the this one the uh, uh, hard hats like uh, approach. I I tried to use the uh, ganache. It's just a bit clunky. This one is uh, smooth and I like this. So I'm planning to like use, using this moving forward. And uh, yeah. thank you for the tutorial. Yeah, exactly. So um, so if you're going to keep using uh, the local environments, then this this one is the best in a way. Um, but if this is the first, if you guys are not like that interested in building the three apps more in the future, then you can go for the easiest one to follow. So, but if you if you think about having more future in this field, then hard hats and knowing hard hats is, it's going to benefit you a lot. Yeah. Mm. Uh, okay, so is it clear for everyone what we are discussing, what Antonia asked or are you guys confused? Okay, I think Burhan also had that issue. Burhan, um, maybe, did you get the answer? No, I don't completely uh, get the answer. Can you repeat it? Okay, um, you need, I last, so previously I told you to use the public key, but I was mistaken and you were supposed to use the private key and you get that from your MetaMask account and you get on, in your account details and then you export your uh, private key. Okay, thank you. That's good. Thank you. Okay, uh, Fasa, what was the question? Oh, that worked? Great, thanks. Okay, Josias, is, is that a question? No, Yedidia was saying that we discussed the concept. Yes, Yedidia was saying that we discussed the concept. So I'm still, I'm still uh, trying to to implement it using right. implementation. Okay. I don't so, have it yet. So but concept. Okay, is it on the smart contract or using the hard hat? You mean? 
guest. The documentation is merely going to help you. I'm using hard card documentation. Okay. So the documentation is just going to help you with um an I'm using hard cards. Yes. Um so it's going to help you with the setting it up locally. But if you take a look at that refrigerator uh, repository, it's really going to help you and understand the challenge and how you can ap approach it and everything. So maybe if you have if you haven't seen it, maybe take a look at it right now and maybe we can. Okay, so uh, okay. there okay. we defined, we use, there are different, it's a location based um, system kinda, and that's why it's going to help you in the understanding this challenge. Uh, maybe if there are some that has that have already started the implementation of the smart contract, I think uh, it would be best to start discussing about the implementation. What kind of what type of data types the, the different types of data types that you are using for the smart contract implementation and how you would normally structure the smart contract to be able to receive the address or the location of the employee and uh, somehow uh, do all of the verification on the smart contract. Uh, Andrew? Uh, yeah, I have another question before maybe we're going to that. Okay. Because I haven't started actually uh, like uh, planning out how I, I approach like uh, designing the smart contract and uh, like all of that, but like I am just trying to like uh, understand and work with the smart contract here, but. My question is like, now I managed to uh, deploy it on the Gorilla, Gorilla, uh, yeah. however that's pronounced, uh, network. So like, how can I, uh, so like we designed this uh, token uh, smart, smart contract, right? So we deployed it. So what is the next move? Uh, I mean, I try to look uh, at the documentation and it just stops there. So how can I, uh, see the transactions or like how, to, how how can I transfer and work with the smart contract? Like mm -hmm. how can I, where can I go from here? Okay. Okay. So uh, once you deploy your smart contract, uh, you'll be able to get an address uh, returned from the deployed smart contract. And also, yes, uh, yes are you using hard hat, hard hat or? Yeah, yeah. I'm using hard hat and like after, uh, deploying that I have the uh, like I have an account balance in token address returned uh, like yeah account balance or uh, ac account balance and uh, token address and like deploying contract with the account and it would I think it is uh, an address as well yes yes yeah. and so every time you uh, interact with a smart contract in any type of smart contract actually you will need the account the deployed address the deployed contract address in the ABI to be able to interact with the smart contract so for example let's say you have a smart contract yes in our case uh, you'll be building a smart contract that will refund uh, employees uh, based on their location or based on the agreement and to be able to interact with that smart contract from your front end or from your mobile application uh, you will need the address of that deployed contract and you will also need the ABI. On heart, I'm not exactly sure uh, where to get that on other uh, frameworks, but on hard heart, I think it's under artifacts directory or the artifacts folder. Uh, do you see artifacts folder under it? Uh, there, there is, yeah. After yes. like when we build the contract, it will like be generated yes. automatically. Yes. Yes, and under artifacts, uh, under under artifacts uh, directory, you should be able to find uh, a contract subfolder, and in that sub in that contract subfolder, uh, uh, you will be able to find your some contract. Contracts. Yes, and in that yes. there is the ABI. Uh, okay. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm seeing. Do you find it? The, the ABI is an array. Of know, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you will need the ABI and the address of the contract to be able to interact with that on your front end or from your mobile app or so on. Okay. So is there on your, 
Okay, go on. Uh, is there any way like a CLI or uh, maybe like a web interface before like I build out my uh, my user interface? Like, is there a way of like interacting and testing out the smart contract? Uh, uh, yes, yes. The, it, okay, I'm not. Ex I I forgot the name, but there is a CLI on Hard Hat. Does anyone? Uh, is anyone working on the CLI for hard drive? There is a CLI, I'm not exactly sure uh, about the name, but there is a CLI, but if you're not also using the CLI, you can, uh, you'll be able to interact with that on your own, on the smart contract implementation or on the hard drive implementation. From the hard drive, once that contract is deployed, uh, you won't need to provide the ABI because the, uh, uh, the created, uh, the created, name for that contract will also hold the ABI. So the ABI won't be required when you are deploying the contract and then interact with the deployed contract directly on the, on the hard drive implementation. If, if you want to interact with the smart contract from other applications, you will need to provide the ABI because uh, your applications won't know how your smart contract is structured or even uh, the different types of methods that are in your smart contract. But if you just provide the address in your hard draft implementation, you'll be able to interact with a smart contract. For example, uh, in this week's project or challenge, uh, let's say there is uh, a create employee method or a create employee function in your smart contract. You just can continue from that deployed function, from that deployed con smart contract, you just can continue to call up those methods that are available in your smart contract by just providing the address. Once you get the address from the different smart contracts, you'll be able to just call those methods uh, on the returned method. Okay, so like there is a way of uh, calling those uh, made, I mean, uh, so like, is there any a specific library that allows me to like interact with it? Uh, for example, like I want to test out this, like uh, the one that we've just like uh, done, did in the tutorial that there is this token uh, contract that we created. Like we followed uh, from the uh, from the site, so, so from the documentation of like Red Hat, uh, Hard Hat. So uh, like I wanted to like uh, interact with the function. So like uh, there is just a simple, it is a simple contract. It has a uh, one function called like transfer and another, I think it does just uh, shows, show us a balance, a balance of like uh, the specific address. So uh, like I wanted to like can communicate, I mean, uh, with um, us, yeah. how can I go about that? Okay, I think uh, if, if I understand your question to interact with your smart contract locally before using it on the, on the front end or on the app, right? So you're going to use exactly, the yeah. console. So uh, there is this okay. console uh, command that you can use your hard hat console and then you provide the name of the the, <clears throat> the network that you have specified which could be the gorilla this in this case and then you um so we saved the if you remember we were imp importing the eters modules right so I think we use that yeah we're breaking we used up the this. eters oh, am i Okay. Yeah, now I can hear you, but you are breaking up. So. Okay. Um, so I don't know which part you heard me. Um, so you, there is this. <clears throat> uh, you see, like there is a CLI, a console command. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And then you use the ethers module or library that we have imported before. If you remember, we were importing the ethers command right and that's going to help you and maybe you can use like ethers.git and uh, it's going to uh, um, interact with your smart contract there are different yes. uh, tutorials step, maybe i can what provide step, on what step we actually like import the ether i don't remember um yeah so when i when we were importing i imported a bunch of uh libraries there i imported like a, a, a do you mean like uh, like we installed from the package like using yes. yarn or like npm like yeah. we installed some packages like we have two dependencies right 
So the one is the Red Hat Toolbox, and uh, the other is like, uh, I mean, uh, Hard Hat, like I kept saying Red Hat, I don't know why. But like one is the Hard Hat Toolbox, and the other is the Hard Hat, like the, Network, two, the right? there are only yeah. two libraries. Yes. Okay, so which one you we, if you remember, we imported some child, uh, we imported the child, yeah, the inter testing. It's okay, you can, oh yeah, you can import it again. It's, it's fine, it's not a problem, but okay. they allow you to interact with the smart contracts. So oh, okay. They allow you to get the information from, even on the web, you are going to use ethers or web, uh, web 3 js So it's going to allow okay. you to interact with okay. the smart contracts. So I'll just keep digging on the uh, documentation. Yeah, we will also provide some tutorials on that yeah. if you Okay, if you thank want. you. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay, nothing. Uh okay. I have uh have quick questions. Uh the first one is like okay. on the implementation part. Uh, we have to define some distances, right? Like from uh, distances from the employer, employee. Like for example, if we have 50 meters, so I think he has to be in 50 meter radius of, from the specified location. Uh, how do how do we how do we implement that? And my second question is another question, but uh, for for those of us who are using uh, uh, Truffle, uh, we can find the ABI file in the build slash contracts. There will be like the contract name dot JSON, I think. Yeah, and in, inside that we can find the ABI file, the ABI array. Uh, we can do that. We can use that for the front end. And um, my third question is: Can can't we use like Remix for interacting? Uh, with our smart contract before deploying it into uh, and using start using it in the front end uh okay uh great thank you for uh for the abi information for, uh, on the travel framework so uh, i think uh we need to be on the same page on building the smart contracts because uh as i've said earlier i feel like most of us are focused on the uh, deployment and interaction with the smart contracts so uh, maybe starting from Nathaniel's question, it's perfectly fine to use uh, Remix to be able to, to, to first to build the smart contract, then interact with the smart contract and make sure all of our logics are implemented well and uh, everything everything works uh, uh, as, per, uh, as per our goal. So can we maybe start talking about how you guys are maybe planning to implement the smart contract? Can we start from that? Let's spend some of, about 20 or 30 minutes on the smart contract implementation. Then we can proceed on other questions that you have regarding the frameworks, the deployment and interaction uh, with the front end. Uh, maybe, okay, Fasa, is that a question or? It was a question, but uh, since our Discussion is going to change. Maybe I will ask this question later. Okay, okay. Let's just discuss about the smart contracts and uh, about the smart contract implementation. Then uh, uh, we can then get back to the Q and A session. So, has anyone started the smart contract the smart contract implementation? Um, or at sorry. least, <clears throat> sorry to interrupt. Before we do, can we maybe answer Antonin's question on the? In the chat <clears throat> sure uh, uh she's asking about what's the difference between abi and the the address is. okay okay so the abi will hold all of the smart contracts logic the different methods the different available uh uh the different available defined uh maybe static keys and other functions that are in your smart contract. Some of the functions might be payable, some of them just might be uh, changing the transaction, changing the state of the blockchain or so on. So 
you have different logics on your smart contract and the ABI is compiling all of those logics and just having them in a, in a single JSON file. But the address is the one is where your smart contract is deployed on the blockchain. So you might use different networks on your blockchain. You might be using the minute or other uh, test networks. So once you do play, once you do play uh, your smart contract on the test net or on the minute, you will get a specific address for that smart contract. So the contract address will hold the address of that deployed smart contract, while the ABI will hold all of the information uh, that you implemented in your smart contract. Yeah, can, uh, can I ask? Yes, can I ask? Uh, yes, so how, how, sorry, how differently we use them? So how, for what we will use the ABI and for what we will use the address? Um, uh, okay, so you need both of them, the ABI and the address, once you start interacting with your smart contract. So maybe uh, if you started, if you have already started building your front end or mobile app, uh, you, okay, I've used the ethers library. So uh, on the ethers library, you need to provide the ABI address, the ABI and the contract address to be able to interact with your smart contract. For example, uh, if your smart contract uh, has a method called create employees, you will first initialize the iters and also provide the smart contract, the ABI and the address of the smart contract. Then you'll be able to call the available methods like create employee uh, on that created object. So you'll need both of them when starting to interact with your smart contract. Inkla? Okay, uh, Margaret. Um, you were talking about the smart contract implementation and there was a sample code you sent for refrigerator um, that we should look at. And mm -hmm. I tried to understand it, but I didn't quite understand it. So I was just asking if we, if you could guide us through and just the code and just a quick explanation of the sample. Okay, sure, sure. I will do that. We'll do that. Uh, uh, okay, Andrew. Uh, it's just uh, like I want to uh, give some, I want to give a tip for those of you who are using like uh, JavaScript. So like uh, it is best uh, not to like store your private uh, Gordly key or any like keys on your JavaScript file. So uh, make sure that you're using the .env uh, library and uh, just uh, use process.env to access your environmental variables on your .env and do not forget to like ignore it uh, from your like uh, Git repository as well. So just to uh, like tell you that i just want to shout that out oh thanks so yeah thanks so when we come to the implementation i was thinking more like uh having this smart first of all i i took the assumption and this was also one of my questions that the contract is going to be like uh like a representative of the employer right because this, when we interact with this smart contract, we're basically interacting with the needs and specific demands of our employer, right? So with that in mind, maybe if I'm wrong, uh, correct me here. That's the way I understand it. Yes, yes, you're correct. Yeah, so the smart contract is going to basically be our boss. So, um, so, I'm um, like when when I think about it, I like uh, I, I I like to talk, I like to uh, create these functions where we can add uh, employees, and that in that way we can have an address for each and individual 
employees, employers, which one? The ones that do the job. Right? So, yes. Yeah, sorry. The, so the ones that do the job, I would, I'm, I'm trying to create a function for that. And another state variables would okay, be so, like, uh, maybe, the, yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. So, so uh, what type of data are, what is the what is the data type that you are going to use for that specific function, FISA? Because I think it's at least going to be an address. I think it's okay. going to be an address. And, so uh, are you going? I, no, I basically was thinking more like the. It's going to be a struct, and mm. with their name, their several properties, and basically I am going to be adding the address data type in that struct. We can call that uh, workers or employers or employees or something like that. That was what I was thinking. Okay, so the struct is going to hold uh, the information of the employees, or because the struct will only be able to uh, hold the information for a single employee, right? Yeah, yeah. The struct is going to be created in a way to. Uh, track each and every individual uh, employee. But when we mm. come to the smart contract, we are going to obviously have a list, uh, at least mm. uh, based on my assumption, maybe I will yes. be wrong, yes. about yes. list of employees that when you call this function, this uh, this structure, this struct, let's call it, uh, let's call it a struct, this struct is going to be created and going to be added in this list of uh, employees, right? So that's that was my first thought on the adding uh, the employees. Mm, okay, so uh, I think to make uh, to make it clear for everyone, just to make sure that we are all on the, on the same page, uh, let me just go over the logic that we are going to use. So uh, we have one employer. So our actors on this application or on this smart contract are, the first one is going to be the employer. So the employer will be able to manage his employees. So maybe he can create new employees. He can add the, the employees list to our smart contract. So think of having uh, a method that will create new employees. And then uh, the employer will also be able to look uh, through the list of employees. That's just for management of the employees. Then. Uh, from the employee side, every time uh, he sends, every time the mobile application sends the location of the employee, the smart contract uh, should be able to retrieve that location, that specific location, and check if that location is uh, in accordance with the agreement or with the specified distance range. So, uh, going back to Nathaniel's question, I think Nathaniel, or I don't know who asked that, that question, how we can uh, check the distance. So. There are different approaches that you can do, especially the maths is, you have different uh, options uh, to calculate the distance, but one thing that we can do is we can at least get the center of that uh, location. So let's say your agreement is to be a range of 50 meters in radius. So you can have the the center of, uh, of uh, of the employee's location that he's supposed to stay in. And if you have the distance, if, if you have the center, then I think it's easy to calculate the radius or uh, it's easy to calculate the range within 50 meters from, from that specific center. So if you, are, if you are given the coordinate of the center, then you just have to check uh, if the employee's location is within 50 meter radius from that GPS coordinate. But I think the question was more like, how do we send this latitude and longitude from the phone to the smart okay. contract? Yeah. If I'm not missed. Uh, yeah. Okay. And so to add. To add? Uh, okay. I, go are we going to like implement the distance uh, calculation on the smart contract, or we fetch the latitude and the longitude, the same term? that employee the employer apps and implement that on the platter part uh, which one is uh, like the okay so how how can you calculate that from the flutter application because 
the agreements the specified center maybe you are going to some place for work and uh, yeah, your employer has the center for that location and how can the flutter app know where that location is i think uh, that, uh, okay i can use like uh, after i get the location of the user i i get mm. lat latitude and longitude right yes and from the smart contract uh i can get the center the center which is also a latitude and longitude so i can just like uh do the distance between them yes that's also possible but the main point of using the smart contract is that the decentralization and other logics that are in your smart contract but here you are taking uh, uh you are taking that logic into your mobile application and you are going to send if the employee complied or if it didn't comply with the agreement from your mobile application rather than being sent from the smart contract yeah yeah you're right yeah so the the, the correct way to implement that would be to send the location uh, from the employer's mobile application to the smart contract and the smart contract will implement uh the distance will implement the distance calculation logic and if the employee complied with the agreement uh, there will be a state to be changed or updated on the smart contract. Uh, okay, so uh, I have like a follow-up question. Okay, go on. So, <clears throat> the location has to be like uh, sent uh, within an, with some interval. For example, we might send it like with uh, with inter intervals of thirty seconds. And for example, like for the first three thirty seconds, or so for the first three intervals, the employee the employee might might uh the locations might be valid but for mm. the, for the next two might not be valid and also for the third one for the sixth one it might be valid how mm. do we like uh how do uh, we tackle okay. this so okay uh maybe uh, you might also use different logics for this uh one thing one way that i'm thinking is uh maybe you, you can set a threshold for the agreement of the compliance or not. So if the employee agreed, if, if the employee was in compliance for uh, three or four uh, validations or three or four rounds, maybe that employee actually complied with the agreement. But if the employee was out of that uh, location for more than four rounds, uh, that employee wasn't in compliance with the agreement. Um, actually, <clears throat> I mean, it's supposed to terminate whenever they're out of the compliance, right? Mm, yeah. So it doesn't yes. matter if they go back or should the contract should terminate that and should uh, maybe decline the transfer. So th there should not be a way to get, to get it, like to, if they come back, it, it should not matter. Because the whole idea is so that they don't go out of the range, if that makes sense, right? Yeah. Yeah. What if we? But, uh, go on. What if we like uh, keep count of like the compliant count? So if they are like there is going to be a strike. So if they consistently like for let's say like uh, uh, consistently like uh, are in the range. So when we calculate it, like we get this. Uh, I uh, uh, range, I mean locations, right? So if they are in that range for, let's say, like ten times or twenty times or hundred times, uh, then we're going to like fund them or like incentivize the employee. But if they're not the, if they're not like complying with that uh, range or like if they are against that strike, so it will just reset to zero and they have to like uh, count and like we can do that like instead of like just uh terminating the the contract uh yeah i form. mean of course you can do that that's that's another possibility <clears throat> but um is that what's actually is that what the business is asking because um the document usually shows what some sort of business needs right so you're right you we can add that feature and it could make it better but in this case maybe our maybe our the system that we're trying to build maybe should not have that does does that make sense like we could do that of course yeah yeah it makes sense the point yeah 
Yeah, but like uh, from what I understand from the document, like it doesn't actually say that like this is something that will like make uh, the contract to like terminate. Yeah. In, in the state, it says like if the GPS sensor indicates that the employee an employee is outside of the range of the agreed GPS area, the contract state will be updated to indicate that it is out of compliance. So exactly, the state will be just updated to indicate it's out of compliance. So like there must be some kind of way of like uh, monitoring the compliance of like that uh, employee that he's actually in the. Uh, range so like my way of like doing that maybe is the one that I uh, ju I've just said so yeah uh, terminating uh, could also be like uh, a possibility so whatever that is easier or like more uh, well sound like we can go with that I guess yeah sure um, you can do that what happens so you're going to count the out of complaints and then you're going to give warnings and then you're going to, if it meets uh, like certain uh, limiting, um, I don't know, like limits, then you're going to set it to zero. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will just reset to zero. It's like, uh, so like you have to, in order to get the incent incentive or in order to get the ether, you have to like have, for example, like 20 strikes, like a straight strikes, uh, yeah. I mean like, uh, to get incentivized but if you like f let's say once you get uh, out of like uh, some range uh, so it will reset to zero it reset to zero so you will never get incentivized unless you yeah. have that record actually yeah. go ahead and implement that that would be actually more interesting to to see mm. uh, yes i think yeah. that will be an, an additional feature on the application yeah. and the agreement from employer from one employer to another might be different between the employer mm -hmm. and the employees and the you, you will be able to give the employers an additional feature or option to use based on their argument i think that's also nice yeah so i, I have another question looking forward to that. oh cool uh, i have a question though so uh like is there when we uh initialize like the constructor the contract like we have a constructor so that like uh, we can initialize the 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 states or the variables right so uh, can we do something like like allow the employer to specify like the number of strike that uh, the like he wants to the employer the employer wants to like allow uh, yeah to get like incentivized like can we do that like uh, initialize based on the employer per, uh, preference. Like, can we do that? Yeah, you can do that. Uh, that's so this functionality is something uh, we've added here in this discussion, but of course you can do that. You can give the, um, the employer, the employer an, an option to do that. And it's but actually, that's how it should be, right? So an employer has to have some sort of agreement or with the employee like it should not be uh, out of the complaints within this number of, uh, more than this number of times. So yeah. it's better to not to hard code it then. Yeah, yeah. don't, don't. Yeah. So okay. you, should, uh, you should use or you should include most of the things that, uh, that are like this on the smart contract. But for those of you that maybe are a bit confused, you can ignore this part because this is an additional to the, task, the tasks that given to you guys we are adding more um what if features to the system so if you if it's confusing you uh, it's okay but on the net yes you could do that and you should do that okay i'll try thank you okay is that Uh, yeah, I was just curious on how we are going to use this smart contract for several employers. I mean, once we deployed it, we are basically saying, this is me, this is, I'm like the employer, and employees are going to interact with the smart contract, right? What if another employer wants to, uh, wants to use the same contract? Does he like take it 
take the code of the smart contract himself and deploy it to a network, uh, maybe modifying the name and uh, some other uh, parameters? Like, how does this work for several employers? The same way that it would work for several, several employees. You should not, you shouldn't only be getting one employee's data, right? You should be, you should be able to handle multiple employers and should also be able to handle multiple employees. So you should have some sort of an array of employees and uh, an array of employers. So it shouldn't, this should not be for one employer or anything. If that's what you but mean. I thought, yeah, maybe I missed the whole point, but I thought that like this one smart contract means one employer, depending yeah, on the functions yep. and the things that we are going to implement. I thought that this contract was going to be representing an employer, an employer, mm -hmm. yeah. So if You're you right. have multiple employers on there, how is uh -huh. that going to work? How is the whole logic going to work? Maybe I'm missing a fundamental thinking. No, no, no. You're right. You are right. So a person that owns the small contract has to be a, a single person and that you can make it the employer, but you can also have ways to add the employer, right? In the system, other other than the owner of the, the, um, the small contract. You could have a struct of another employee like you, um, when you are designing, you'd have the struct of employees, right? That's something you create when you are working, writing the smart contract. You can also create a struct of the employers. That's actually a good point. Uh, uh, that's a good but, point. But uh, like, uh, sorry to cut you off like that, but like, uh, doesn't that make it uh, complicated? I mean, uh, yeah, my concern is that like if we going to like <clears throat> allow to like if we make the employer the owner of the smart contract that would make sense and it would make our life easier like implementing the smart contract but if we are going to entertain uh, lots of employers they, they are going to have a, a different kind of uh, agreements between their employees so like we we have to like uh, keep the state of like what employer employs what employee and like uh, how this employer wants the contract to be behave like so like there is this all sorts of like complexities that it will bring if we are going to like have a multiple like array arrays of employers but but the for but for employees like their contract would be like the same for a single employer so like they are going to be governed by specific con contract so I, this makes it a little bit uh like uh not complex but i think that would make it like very complex uh to do but like i think i believe it's possible like after you as you've said yeah um you're oh. right so okay yes nothing also how are we going to handle like uh for example one employee can have and be represented by multiple employees. So how are we going to apply those rules? And the employers might have like, different rules for uh, different employees. Uh, I think it's going to be like really complex. Yeah, very much complex. Yeah, very Yeah, complex. I mean, you're right. It is going to be very complex, but it's also going to handle a lot of things, right? So as Fasa said, if you have it's best, I mean, if it's, it's it's great if we only have one employer, but yeah, but what if we have more employees, employers, right? So yeah, I think that's a great question. That's something we should maybe consider. But I would say if I were to do it, I would have done it the, the way I described. But uh, in a way, if there is a way to avoid this kind of situation, that is best, right? But if we have if it's something that we need to implement then yeah i would i would recommend the way i mentioned but what do you think Julia, if you're still here uh yeah i think uh both ways will work definitely but uh if you guys think that the logic might be complicated and uh the agreements will be almost completely different from one employer's agreement uh 
yes, I think you can create a new contract for each employer or for each company and uh, have a different contract for each employer. So each employer will have a different address to use and a different API to use, and they will be the owner of that contract. So we can use the check. You can use, uh, we can restrict the contract to be only used by the owner. So the owner will be the only one to list the employees and also do other logics. Is there a way like to create a dynamic contract like without actually hard coding it? Uh, That's my question as well. Yeah. What do you mean by creating a contract? Uh, for example, like we can we create for based on a, a, a config file? Can we create a, and deploy uh, a smart contract based on a config file? For example, like we, we add some rules and we the, I'm building on top of on top of the idea like you mentioned deploying different smart contract for different employers. So for example, for employee employer X, we define some particular smart contract and that will be deployed. And when uh, employer Y comes in, we, de we, we actually deploy another contract. So is there a way like to dynamically create the solidity file and deploy it? Mm, I mean, yes, you can you can create that from a config file, but I'm not exactly sure if you can be able to access that from an API endpoint. So uh, basically, when deploying, it's uh, for example, when we are using hard hat, you just uh, use the hard hat deploy command, and you can use that command in your application rather than just using the CLI. Uh, but I'm not exactly, I haven't tried that, and I'm not exactly sure if you can be able to do that from the other end, so providing an interface or an API endpoint uh, to automatically deploy uh, for different employers. Yes, I think that, that's something that we will uh, look into and get back to you. Okay, Anjanet. Uh, yeah, like uh, Nathan actually asked uh, the same, the exact uh, thing that comes to my mind when you said uh, like creating a, a smart contract for each employer. So like if we see it, this like application as a like a kind of a SaaS for an employer to like uh, employers to have some kind of uh, contract that's going to be like deployed for them on uh, Ethereum blockchain and their employees can like uh, go into that like specific uh, uh, like uh, contract and like interact with it. Uh, so like uh, if, if there is a way like this might be uh, a bit like simpler than like handling everything on the smart contract, I guess. Like if, if there is a way of like creating like uh, mentioning some kind of, th there's going to be a base, uh, a base like code for the uh, the smart contracts but uh the, like uh, but there is going to be some kind of config that we can like include in our smart contracts and deploy them uh, on demand uh, like uh, through our like application so like it's going to be some kind of like hybrid uh, approach so we have this like way to interface for or way of like allowing employers to have their own like smart contract to uh, uh, th that they can use it with their employees. So like we can also like explore that if that's possible. Mm. Yes, I think uh, we can also look into that, but uh, the best way to be safe and uh, make sure that the, uh, the agreement and the compliance and all of the logic that comes with way three uh, is complying like is complied. I think it's best to uh, to for, to only use uh, the Web three concepts as much as possible, rather than using the Web two concept. But uh, I think, unless as far as it's not uh, it's not changing the the agreement between the employer and the employee, and it's something that's being set by the employer, we can also look into that. Uh, okay, so, okay, Antonin? 
Uh, yes, I have a, a basic question about, um, I mean, uh, I, I got a bit confused about uh, talking about what hard coding and like allowing the employer to create, uh, I mean, what is the goal of having, or what is the benefit, or what is special about having a, a smart contract in this case? I mean, why doesn't the employer-employee have um, a, just a normal agreement and... Why do they have to use a smart contract? What is the benefit? Uh, okay, I think we've been okay. Okay, uh, maybe can someone answer that from the trains? Uh, come again, please. Like I, uh, I just lost you for a bit. Is it the same question on the chat? Like you asked, Imtanah. Uh, no, I don't think I asked on the chat. I'm asking what is the benefit of having a smart contract? Why Why do, what, yes, what will the employer and the employee gain from having their agreement as a smart contract? Why don't they have just use a normal yeah. um, contract, I mean. Okay, so from what I understand is like the whole point of like using Web3 or like decentralized way of like handling this kind of transactions or like uh, contract is to uh, minimize like uh, trust that we have to like impose on uh, uh, an entity. So like uh, it's kind of like a smart contract is kind of like an unbreakable con uh, promise, right? So uh, you, once the employer and the employee uh, like agreed upon that smart contracting, like if they're uh, like complying with the contract, so they will be rewarded. So in order to like uh, avoid uh, like a misusage of like, uh, for example, the employer might uh, decide to like Is everyone there? Oh, I thought it was from my end. Um, Andenet, I think it's Andenet's connection. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, Andenet, I think Andenet, Andenet did good in answering that. Yeah, it's to avoid the whole concept of trust and to have an immutable contract done designed right? yeah but he didn't finish his answer yeah so you when when one small contract is deployed there is no way change there is no way to change that contract and it's or it's it's going to be like that forever if you don't create another version of it so um no one can tamper with the contract um so that's the main basic benefit of using a small contract is that it's it avoids the whole uh, trust and it avoids the whole um, a case where uh, an update or a change on the small um, the smart contract occurs. It could be from the employer side or it could be from the employee side. So no one uh, no one has the power to change the contract once it's agreed upon and once it is deployed. So that's the main uh, benefit of using a smart contract. So it's not. Um, it's immutable and it avoids the whole uh, concept of uh, trust and transactions. So that's the main the main uh, concept. That's why we use smart contract. Okay, C can you specify uh, maybe uh, to if I understand uh, what the, what are the terms that are fixed are not supposed to change in 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 this case? Like we are we are requiring that the employee doesn't move uh, or Okay. 
Um, okay. Hello? Yes, I, I can hear you. Yes, uh, sorry. So, uh, so the location where the employee is supposed to, or the center of the location, the employee is supposed to be, should be fixed in the contract. It shouldn't, the employee shouldn't be allowed to change it. Am I understanding this correctly? Yes, for one employee, yeah, that should be. Depends on the agreement, but yes, that's how it should be. So if there is a way, if, if the contract allows the employer employer to to create different employees and uh, with different, uh, I mean, locations, I suppose, uh, then uh, we should allow them to create this once and not to be able to change it anymore, right? Mm, not really, because what if, uh, so one location could be for one job. Uh, you can you can do that, but one location could be for one job, right? But if you have another job that's coming up for the same employee, you can you can set uh, a new location or a new range that an employee uh, should be in. But it, all of that is going to be tracked, right? All of that is going to be publicly tracked whenever an update is done on the smart contract. Anyone can be able to see it. So this is not actually changing the changing the smart contract per se, but it may it might be like updating some feature or setting. Uh, we have seen a get. Um, so yesterday we've seen how to set a, a a value to a variable and to get them right. So we can just have that concept. We can set a new location to uh, to an employee. We can update that, but we cannot actually change it if that's what you mean. Yeah. Okay. I think I, I think I get it. Uh, there is this aspect also of everything being public, also every transaction being public. So I mean, any change is going to be tracked anyway. Yes. So yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Okay. This is a, this has a good point. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, does anyone has have more questions? Okay. What happens after you've um, somehow uh, managed to track an employee, what happens next? What if an employee is within the range? How are you going to perform the uh, transact? Uh, were you going to say something, Didier? Or... No, 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 go on. Okay, so what happens next after you have <clears throat> evaluated uh, the location or if you have calculated this? What comes next? Have you guys thought about that? How you're going to implement it? Basically, I think we are going to use a transfer or payable method to transfer some funds to his address, maybe? I don't know. But I think yeah. that's... Yeah, yeah, you are going to do that. But how are you going to... <clears throat> so how are you going to get um, that... that that um, guarantee that it's within the range. So I think um, I didn't go into it really deep, but I think the events thing that was mm -hmm. uh, that was described previously can play a big role in this part because when for a given amount of time, say a day. If this person is, if this person's state is not changed, or by the end of some given time, if this person's state is not changed to out of compliance or out of range, whatever state we give it, we will check for that by the end of the day or by the end of the agreed time, and we will just call this function, or we will just call this event. I think maybe that is the. I, didn't, I again, I didn't actually went through it. But that was what I was thinking to implement, checking for this state, which will be altered if the guy was out of compliance or out of range. So basically, if this if this state state, I was thinking about it more in a, a variable type of sense. So if this state changed, no pay by the end of the day or by the end of some time, didn't. 
pay him the mm -hmm. money. But he not really well taught. Okay. Uh, okay, not me. No, that's that's. Uh, I just wanna like try to that answer really Nardo's good. question. Okay, yeah. Uh, yes, okay. okay, can I go? Yeah, go. On. Uh, okay, uh, I was thinking like, uh, since we we don't transfer like the funds quite regular regularly, what I mean is like, uh, we might transfer the fund at the end of the day. So for example, like for today, like we might transfer today's fund at the, at midnight. So as uh, Fish mentioned, uh, we can have some flag that will actually change if the employee and the employee is not on the location for some time or for even for even like one request to it is out of bound we might change the state and based on that uh, state we might apply like a, a fund transfer at the end of the day right. that was what i was thinking yeah i think that's actually a good point uh what I was thinking was to just transfer the funds once the time interval ends. For example, if the employer states that the start date for uh, for that specific uh, smart contract implementation check is, uh, let's say, tomorrow, then it will end after three days. Uh, after three days, if the employee con uh, complied with the agreement, the funds will be transferred. But also, I think what you said is also a really good point and good features to add. So every day, uh, the smart contract will check if the employee is complying with the agreement and the funds will be transferred maybe on midnight or so on. Uh, okay, so, okay, Michael. Michael, we can't hear you for speaking. Michael? Okay, we can hear you now. Yeah, so uh, I do have some microphone problem, but uh, on the top of what Nathaniel has said, uh, yeah, well, yesterday we have been talking about uh, what if the employee left his phone on the workplace and he have not been present physically. How could we handle that on the top of this uh, 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 daily recurring uh, check of coordinates of the employee? Uh, okay, so we can't we can't handle that, but we are just adding one additional step of uh, verification before funding back the employee. I mean, if they leave their phone on their hotel or on their rooms, there is no way of checking if the if the employee complied with the agreement or not. But we are just trying to add one more uh, one more additional. Uh, check before just refunding the employee. Or maybe, or maybe you can, <clears throat> again, this doesn't solve the whole issue, but you can have uh, somehow um, a button that um, a, an employee has to send, um, send, a, hmm, we send the event that they are there. Because if you use a button whenever you was in, a different time interval to update that the user is actually so, uh, using the app. So I was uh, yeah, writing some idea about that. Yeah, I was writing some idea on uh, the top of that. Uh, on the chat box, I don't know if you have seen it. Uh, so we might think it like uh, if the user have to refresh some token on the front end, so we could handle that it's present physically on that specific location. Uh, can you maybe 
uh, elaborate that more because I don't know what that is. Yeah, I think like uh, what we have done on the uh, certificate meeting part, so we should have some uh, trigger from the printing so, so that to so that we can check he's physically present on that location. Yeah, so basically like a button or something, or a pop-up. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Okay. Yeah, that could also work. <laughs> Again, there are some loopholes that we cannot handle with the, with the, our system. Of course, there are going to be some, some things that we're going to um, miss or... But, yeah. Okay, yes. Uh, so I think uh, what we are looking from you guys is to just look into different approaches and different implementations that used for this application. I, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing different approach, different ideas, and that's really great. Some of them might have some loopholes, as Nador said, maybe uh, the employee can't reply back or respond to that event or trigger on night time. That might work on the only on the, on the time, but uh, Let's try to have different approaches or different, let's try to add different features into our application. And uh, let's think of actual, uh, let, let's try to think of an actual application that an employee and an employer would use in their day-to-day -day life or in their uh, work environment. Uh, Michael, is that another question or? Okay, Andrinet. Uh, actually, I just changed my mind. Never mind. Okay. I, I was just thinking like a smart way, uh, like more like a way that doesn't involve the employee, uh, like a way of handling this issue. Maybe like I was, it might be like a dumb idea, but uh, so like in order, if the user user can just uh, place the his phone or her phone, I mean the employee can place the, their phone or like some place, right? So. Uh, uh, the application automatically just sends the the location, but we can also in our smart contract write a logic that if we get, uh, for example, consecutively like the same uh, uh, exact like uh, location or coordinates of location, uh, does doesn't make sense, right? So uh, so like we can uh, like uh, categorize it as like. Uh, malicious or a person like an employee who's who is trying to like trick the system so we can maybe uh like uh, send a like a push notification to confirm that they're in the in the in the place where they're saying uh, or uh, something like that no so yeah, like, I, I, yeah yeah yeah, that, that's also another approach, unless the employee is sleeping. While the employee is sleeping, uh, he will be on the same location, at the same location for the entire night or so on. I, I think we, we all are seeing different approaches that we can use for the implementation. And uh, let's try to make it feasible for, the, for, for our application or for our employee and employer agreement relationships. So let's try to make it more feasible and let's try to add additional features and additional, let's try to look into additional uh, approach that would make it more uh, feasible. Okay, anyone else maybe, okay, that I know the time is going, but I think it would be based if someone can just uh, demo for five or 10 minutes what you guys have already implemented, especially focused on the smart contract. Just the data types that you have used or even are planning to use. Uh, you might just open your VS Code. Your app should not, we don't expect for the app to be completed, but just show us where you are and uh, roughly go over uh, the approach or that you take for the entire smart contract implementation, the Solidity code. Okay, anyone?
Okay, this is just to uh, this just to comment. This not uh, to look where you are, where you guys are at, but just uh, to help others uh, in the in the call, so that everyone will at least understand the flow of the smart contract implementation. Nice, Fisa. Yeah, I'm just going to be sharing my screen. Okay. But as you said, it's not. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh. I understand. Yeah. You might just be starting yeah. the implementation. So what you can also do is just try to comment some of the uh, some of the function names that you'd use. So just list the different functions that you'd use, and at least show us what data type that the, the different types of data types that you that you are going to use in those functions. And everyone can comment and give some idea. Okay, so this is like the this is like the test uh, the template I was talking about. Uh, as you can see, it also imports. Is my screen visible? Is it true? yes? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So this is like the test one. So uh, we can take this function, for example, and we can we can change like this function into uh, to like the one we were talking about, the one that creates the list of employees. We can have like a uh, struct right here that can hold. I don't know. My PC is extremely slow today. I'm really sorry for that. I thought it was not as slow as this. So we can create a struct right here that can uh, have employees. Uh, and we can also have like this list of structs. Again, sorry. Uh, this, yeah, this public. Uh, list of employees, employees mm. like this, of the type employee that we just created here. We can have this function like this uh, changes to the one that can populate this. And basically I am I am using the this terminal and truffle to uh, to use the, the EVM and um, you know do my things there and uh, yeah so basically I think if I can just quickly go here and uh, write console this will give me the interactive uh, terminal the command line uh, interface for interacting with this uh, smart contract that is going to be deployed and this this this, this is uh, yeah so we need to run ganache first this is like the evm i think right ganache is like the evm and since i uh, i have this uh, yeah since i have this out this uh, exposed i am i can actually communicate with this EVM just by exposing this uh, code. So once this, uh, well, once the Ganache is running and once I get this uh, available accounts, I can basically use my Truffle cons in order to interact with this um, smart contract. And yeah, basically I can migrate it. When I run migrate, it will take every contract in this uh, folder and it will migrate it to this uh, this environment that I just showed you, the Ganache environment. So basically, yeah. Yeah, so this is like, the, this, this is, this is ex ex expected because I just created a thing that Solidity doesn't know previously. So that's the problem. But if I remove that, it will successfully migrate to this uh, Ganache network. 
And basically, this is how I am currently trying to uh, use the environment. This is nothing related to the actual smart contract, but I, I just wanted yeah. to show uh, because you actually saved somebody. Uh, yes. That's why. Nice. And nice. Thank, 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 you. thank you. So, do you have any question on the smart contract implementation side? Oh uh, yeah, I I had several questions, but uh, in the talk, in the discussion, I'm sorry to say, that, in the discussion uh, prior to this meeting, I basically got the answers for all my questions. Like okay. uh, the one I asked you previously, if you remember, on how to reframe the contract and the employer. So that is answered by you. The second question on how this can be used for several employers, that was uh, answered by Nardos. And uh, yeah, about I had a question about once this whole thing is written, the transactions, the blocks, and whatever the smart contract is outputting, I had a question on how mutable that was and basically that was also answered and yeah i don't have any questions on implementation. okay great uh thank you Fisa. uh any other volunteer that's willing to present what he or she has implemented especially on the smart contract okay Anjanet? yeah it is not like uh i just uh like, uh, I just try to uh, create uh, some kind of like a snippet uh, on uh, uh, this. Uh. So like, uh, let me just share my screen. It's not a, a, a working. Uh, no, no, no. Like, we, uh, we, we just want to see the logic uh, of your smart contract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then you can ask questions that that's clear that that you don't understand on the implementation side, especially on the smart contract, and we can all uh, give some idea. Okay. All right. Let me just share. So can you see my screen? Mm, yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so let me just maximize this one. So basically we're gonna uh, uh, have- Maybe can you increase the screen size of your okay. base code? Uh, nice. Yeah. So, uh, so like uh, this is the contract, the smart contract. So funded by location. So it's going to like uh, have address of the employee and uh, uh, the maybe uh, date uh, like I mean location uh, location range uh, that the owner like is going to define. So there is going to be also uh, an address address of the uh employer uh so the employer is going to be the owner so when we maybe uh when we uh fund by our contract constructor like when we uh, define it location so uh we might uh like define the owner the employer to be the owner of uh, the smart contract. So yes. like basically so we- uh, That will go into a separate constructor, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like just one, uh, uh, there's going to be a single constructor for uh, yes. a single uh, contract, right? So yes. in that constructor, we're going to be, we're gonna define uh, the owner of the contractor and uh, maybe the 
uh, strikes, I mean, the, the compliant range, yeah. uh, for example, uh, this, like the compliant range being the strike that the user, I mean, the employee can be in. So there's going to be also a location and uh, array of address of employees. So this, uh, this variable contain like array of employees. And uh, we, we use like uh, a struct to define the employee, the number of uh, st strike uh, they have right now and their latest location. And we use, uh, we map that uh, to the, the employee info to store like uh, this struct with their address. So we can access the employee by their address. So we can okay. do something so like employee dot, employee info dot number of strikes, employee info dot latest location. When we do that, like we can uh, maybe like calculate to uh, uh, like f to fund them, like to send them and like, something like that. It's not, yeah. I just, uh, uh, like edited some code. Yeah. yeah, sorry, can you also explain about mapping? So what's yeah. mapping doing and how can you use mapping? Yeah, yeah, mapping is uh, an array, uh, uh, array, kind of an array for solidity. Uh, so uh, an array in uh, JavaScript, like it's defined a bit, the syntax I find it very odd, but like this, what this allowed uh, allows us to do is that like we can now do like employee employee info uh, dot uh, like if we do this like I think I don't know why like we can access the number of strikes like this uh, we can also like access it like uh, access the latest location that an employee is like have is going to be like access like this. So we can uh, use it to calculate like they have this amount of strikes, so they're good to go. They're, they're, so we can actually uh, transfer, like there is a transfer like method, right? Uh, we can use to transfer uh, ether for that user. So like it is like defining the 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 defining the the struct uh, by using their address. So yeah. So yes. So we'll be using the address as our key, right? We access. Uh, yeah. Address. address is our key. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So like, yeah. I, actually, uh, I haven't like uh, right. Yes. Right. So like the address is going to be like zero x something. Yes. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah, we'll get the address uh, from the user. Actually, the way that we could get it might be like a message dot sender. Yeah. So like we can sender. by doing this, like we could uh, maybe access it like so. I haven't thought of it. Like I just uh, wrote this one while you were asking. So like, yeah, this is just my. Yeah kind of approach i think this is good uh the first thing that we need to do is to just brainstorm and uh, have the bigger picture and list the different functions that you are going to use for the smart contract implementation so for example we need a function that will uh, verify if the agreement has been complied or not and also other several different functions so listing them out is the first thing that we need to do, then we can think about the different uh, data types that we are going to use in the different approach that we are going to use. So, Andrew, do you have any question? Do you have any question on the smart contract implementation side? Something that that isn't clear for you, or uh... Uh, not yet? Actually, I I mean, like I I didn't know. I don't know like much to even ask uh, the right question. So, like uh, yeah. Uh, like if I have any question, I'm going to like pause it. But uh, for now, I don't have like any question. But like my approaches here are like the variables that like the possible variables that we're going to be using, and here are the maybe like the methods or the functions. Okay. Can you can you maximize the window? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
uh, yeah. So this is like what I was thinking initially. So there is going to be like a time or a duration uh, that like this is uh, the this is for more of for the mobile application that the duration or the time lapse that's going to see in the location, uh, the coordinates. Uh, yeah, and uh, this is yeah this is redundant actually. So this is going to be uh, an array of employees. Uh, that we're going to have as a state in our smart contract. The location also is going to be uh, like, it is a location for a single uh, employee. So like it's going to be a dynamic variable that we're going to update. Location range is the, the, like, the range that the user has to be. Uh, this is also a variable. So the meters are the, met the main meters I have in mind is just the, the compliant count is just another variable, but check uh, location is in range is one function. Add an employee is also another function. Fund is also another function. Yeah, this is what I have in mind. Yeah. Nice, great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Internet. Uh, You're okay, so anyone else? I mean, if you guys are so confused or haven't even started the implementation, now is the time maybe to just present your screen and uh, ask how to even start if you haven't even started the implementation. Okay, I mean, Adjunet, Fisaha, and some others were very active on the session, but I'm not hearing from others. Uh, we were to go through smart contracts. Uh, which smart contract, Margaret? Yeah, okay, the refrigerator one. I think I, I was thinking that uh, uh, yes, I think it's based uh, maybe to go through the smart contract implementation for uh, disagreement on tomorrow's session. So tomorrow, what we'll do is we'll first go through the smart contract implementation and how there what type of data that the, type, the different type of data that they are using and uh, some mobile mobile application implementation. I think Nardos has mentioned that in the morning, we are not only going to use uh, mobile app for the admin side, we need some kind of a very simple UI uh, for the admin or for the employer to manage his employees, right? Nardos? Yeah, I was. I thought you were asking. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. I'm sure you guys have understand by now, right? I I did try to mention how you should be handling the employer's side. Um, if it's not clear, you can ask. What? But the but but the discussion we did in the morning was um I think was really good. If you have missed that, then maybe you can ask. Yeah, so both the employers and the employee are going to interact with the smart contract. Once, once the smart contract is deployed and we have the address and the ABI information, uh, the employer will be able to go, to interact with the smart contract using uh, a web app, a very simple web app, to just uh, to just look at his employees and if his employees or if our employees are uh, complying with the agreement. Uh, and the employer will only be able to send locations from his mobile, from his or her mobile application to the smart contract, and the smart contract will handle the rest of the logic. Andrew, yeah, can we have the uh, mobile application snippet? I mean, started code like soon. Uh, I mean, if it's already like been written, 
Yes, yes, it's already written. I think we only have the code snippets for React Native and Flutter. I'm not sure if you have uh, a code snippet for other tools. Uh, no, just we have for Android Studio or... Okay, um, I, I do don't think what? we have for other... Uh... I, I was just looking for the Flutter one. So like... Yes, I think we have the Flutter implementation. So uh, yes, we'll compile that and we, we should be able to share that uh, maybe by the end of the day. Yeah, uh, so uh, for this of you that doesn't uh, like okay, code, yet... maybe there is also that new code. Okay, go, 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 go on. Okay, there is also an, a no code option where you can build your mobile application. Maybe you can also use that. Uh, there are, I think it's provided in the document some resources, but this is the best way to build it. Uh, you guys should use the starter code, but if you really don't want to code or if you're running out of time, then that's also an option. That's what I want. Yeah. Uh, in my MIT app, you know, in, inventor, okay, nothing must Russia. What, what's that? Can you tell us? Is that in a good solution or? Yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a technology by MIT. You can develop a mobile app without writing a single code, just by putting some blocks. Oh, nice. Uh, so can you share some links on the Slack channel if you have not already? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. So you guys are not also restricted to the templates that you are going to provide. You can also build your own uh, mobile application, maybe using React Native Flutter or any other uh, tools or technologies that you're already familiar with, and you can also use the no code solutions. Uh, and Margaret, so as I've said earlier, we'll, uh, we'll go over the code implementation that's provided on the challenge documents, uh, before we start the, uh, before we start the demo, the demo session, uh, on the mobile apps. Uh, so, not only just to ask, Margaret is also asking, uh, there should be a way to interact with other APIs or endpoints when using the no code solutions, right? Uh, sorry, is it for me? Yes, uh, when using the no code solution for building the mobile application, uh, how do you handle the logic? If you are already familiar with the, uh, with the application, there should be logic to interact with other, with another endpoints or uh, some custom logic implementations, right? Or is it very restrictive and not customizable? Uh, you you can you you can apply some logics. It's actually has been some time since I have used it, but I, I'm pretty sure you can apply some logic. Mm. Uh, you can use while if and. I think you can also apply your own code if you want. Hmm. Nice. Okay, so share that uh, on Slack and uh, others can use that. Thanks. Okay, any other question before we end our session or is there any question that we forgot to answer? Okay, um, I think we've went over our time, so I'm going to end that according to if no one has a question. Yeah.